Hello! Today's yoga practice is going to be um, strengthening and stretching, opening up our hip flexors and just getting a really deep stretch. So go ahead and jump into something comfortable, roll out your yoga mat, and we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, we're going to go ahead and just get cozy in a seated position. So go ahead and have a seat and then be sure to remove the padding underneath you so your sits bones um, come right into contact with the floor. And we're just gonna um, start to bring awareness to this practice and what you wanna get out of this practice. So I just want you to take a moment to find the calmness in your breath and find the peaceful feeling in this state as you start to practice um, this yoga stretch for opening up the hips. And as you do this, you can choose just to kind of slow your breath down, even try box breathing. So inhaling, starting to lift your breath with your belly first. As you inhale, your stomach expands, and as you exhale, your belly button draws into your center. And so bring your focus to your stomach and that feeling of your stomach rising and falling with each breath. And the importance behind belly breathing is to correct any weird uh, upper chest kind of breathing habits that you might have adapted through stressful times or um, maybe just, just a different habit you've picked up over the years. And so I want you to focus on each breath, expanding the belly, and then exhaling your belly button draws in. And you can definitely tell that you're breathing with your chest first. If you put your hand on your chest and a hand on your belly, and you feel your chest rise before your stomach rises. That tells me that you are really inhaling through the um, through your chest and this actually creates a lot of stress and a lot of tension in through your neck and your jaw and so you probably have some shoulder pain maybe neck pain some other upper body issues with tightness so we're going to address that now and throughout this practice I want you to think about this same pattern with breathing, expanding your belly, getting nice deep breaths, and you're gonna wanna use that in your practice because your breath can help you sink deeper into each one of these poses. So go through one more cycle of breath. This time you can be vocal about it. Go ahead and inhale. Exhale, out through the mouth. <sighs> that actually felt really nice. We're gonna do that, but do it bigger one more time. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. <sighs> Good. All right, we're gonna go into our cow face pose or gomakasana. So go ahead and take your left leg forward and we're gonna stack the right leg right on top of it. <clears throat> So our legs are crisscrossed over each other. And I just want you to sit in this pose and maintain the breath that you just practiced. If you want to put your hands, one on your chest and one on your belly, just to help remind you, you're welcome to do that. I know for many years I had been holding my stomach in, trying to maintain this perfect posture, this perfect looking figure all the time. And so I developed this bad habit of not belly breathing and all that tension and stress it all started to accumulate through my neck and upper body and I started to feel that it was very uncomfortable so this is just an opportunity and now you're in for some this stretch might be very difficult you may feel through the outer hips that this pose is difficult to get in or to stay in but use your breath right now to think of physically releasing these muscles that are tight. 
And so in through your glutes, I want you to think about inhaling, bring nice cool air into these hot areas, these red fiery uh, regions in your body that are tight. And throughout the practice, I want you to think of these tight muscles as red and your breath is gonna be cool blue breeze that when you breathe in and then you exhale, you release the fire. And with that, I want you to think about actually releasing those muscles as well. Let's take one more breath here in through the nose, out through the mouth. Excellent job. All right, let's go ahead and switch legs. So this time we're gonna take the <clears throat> right leg on bottom and cross the left leg on top. And we're not adding the arms here. You can just keep your arms at your side. Um, you can keep your hands at prayer or whatever feels comfortable for you. But I just want you to return to the breath and then think about releasing the fire, cooling these hot, tight regions with cool breeze with the strength of your breath. Be sure to sit up nice and tall. One more breath here, letting go of tension, any fiery tightness, let it go in through your nose and exhale, let it out, make it vocal. Good job. Let's go ahead and unwind those legs and flip over onto all fours. And we're just gonna warm up the spine with a little cat cow. So as you inhale, lift your chest. As you exhale, curl your tailbone under, roll up your spine, press through the fingers, press through the tops of your feet, creating that angry cat. And then go ahead and move through that same series once again. Mm. Now go ahead and walk your hands forward just a little bit and so you're in this plank kind of position and then I just want you to rock your hips forward and back side to side what feels good for you doing a little hip dance a little hip hippie moves I actually can get some cracks out when I do this just some different movement I think different movement is good Good for your body, you move in different ways. All right, great. Now just go ahead and lower those elbows down right underneath you. And then I just want you to lift the toes, lift up onto the toes and then peel your hips up towards the sky. As you kick your pelvis towards the sky, you can slowly work into lowering the heels down towards the ground. For our nice puppy posture and as you um, are in this pose I want you to try to um, think of the upper body we don't want to have the hands pulling in towards each other they're really pushing out and in the lower body your legs can spiral in as you lift the hip points up towards the ceiling <clears throat> And if you want to get more of a stretch here, you can always walk your toes up towards your elbows. Remember your breath. Excellent job. All right, let's just go ahead and raise ourselves up to downward facing dog. And then I just want you to draw your belly button into your spine and slowly roll into plank position. <clears throat> and the same thing on the way back. So I want you to reverse this movement, draw your belly button into your spine and reverse wave back down into downward facing dog. 
We're gonna do that two more times. So draw your belly button in, engage through your, all the backside body until you're in that plank position. Pulling your belly button into your spine, finding that integrity with each move, keeping your core engaged. And let's go ahead and reverse. Draw your belly button in, roll down, feel that stretch through the upper body, pressing through the fingertips, your arms roll out, your thighs are gonna plug inwards, inward rotation. One more time here, sync it up with your breath. Roll yourself up until you are nice and straight. Your spine is long, you should feel length here. And then here we go, exhale, roll down, back to downward facing dog. And this time, go ahead and step one leg in front of the other and cat walk your feet up into your hands. <clears throat> Exhale, release, bend the knees, feel a really big <sighs> rest uh, release here. In this posture, you don't have to try to straighten your legs and crank yourself all around. Just kind of collapse here. You can rest your belly right on your thighs. And then I just want you to go ahead and straighten the right leg, keeping the left leg bent. And then bend the right leg and then straighten the left. And do that a couple times on each side. You're gonna feel a really good stretch up through the glutes. If you have tight IT bands, then you may actually feel this kind of down from the hip and even into the knee. But I just want you to make sure you're still lifting the hip points here, not rounding at the lower back. And then a nice big bend, and this time draw, press your feet, all four corners of your weight into your feet, and then roll yourself up one vertebrae at a time, nice and slow. Fingertips are gonna drag up your body up to your armpits and then reach up towards the ceiling. Drop those shoulder blades down into the back pockets of your pants. And then exhale, take your hands to your heart center. Inhale, lift your arms up. Exhale, forward fold, swan dive down. Inhale, halfway up and look, finding length in your spine. Exhale, forward fold. Step or hop into plank. We're starting to build some heat. Lower into chaturanga. Pressing up into upper facing dog. And exhale, fold it back into downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your right leg up towards the sky. Now keep your hips stacked here. We don't need to go all crazy and be flinging that leg around. So keep those hips stacked, lift the leg, exhale. Pull your knee into your chest. Hold for three, two, one. Step that leg up and through. Now back leg, we're just gonna go ahead and take it to a 45 degree angle and just keeping the heel in line with the front foot. Inhale, lift up for warrior one. Now take a moment here, square up the hips. This is a position we always want to try to like open up and so Getting into this position may feel a little bit different, but I just want you to try to keep your hips forward. Inhale, lift those arms up towards the ceiling. Squeeze your glute on the left side. Try to keep the leg straight. And then your front leg, you can just go ahead and bend, get a little deeper bend and feel a really good stretch through the hips. Let's go ahead and take our hands back behind our body, interlace the hands and just feel this whole side body stretch through the left side body, the hip, your chest. Great job, let's go ahead and release the hands, frame the right foot, step it back into plank. You can decide if you want to go through chaturanga, but we'll meet in downward facing dog. This time, inhale, lift the left leg. Exhale, draw the knee into the chest. Hold it for three two, one, step it through. Once again, place that back foot. Inhale, lift the arms up towards the ceiling. Draw your belly button in, square up the hips. And breathe. Exhale, take the arms back behind the body. Interlace the fingers, open up the chest.
exhale, release. Frame the left foot this time. Move through Chaturanga, or just me in downward facing dog. And then I just want you to go ahead and look between the fingertips, your choice, step or hop to the front of your mat. Inhale, halfway up and look, finding length. Exhale, forward fold. Reverse that swan, reaching for the sky. Exhale, fingertips come to heart center. Inhale, reach the arms up towards the sky. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, halfway up, finding length through the spine. Exhale, forward fold, step or hop into plank. Your choice, move through chaturanga upward facing dog and then back to downward facing dog this time go ahead and lift the right leg and i want you to open up the hip so you're actually going to feel a stretch here if you have tight inner inner thighs you're going to feel the um left leg and then if it's the hip flexors that are tight you actually might feel the right hip right now as you bend and straighten. All right, square those hips back up from that three-legged dog and draw your knee back into center. Hold for three, two, one. Step it through. This time I want you to take your back leg to a 90 degree angle. As you lift up, we're gonna find warrior two. Now in warrior two, I wanna make sure that my front knee isn't wanting to track in. I wanna make sure I'm pressing through the back edge of my foot, my back foot. Lift those arms, lift the chest, and then I want you to think about tucking your tailbone here. So if you are feeling yourself, anything in your lower back, I want you to think about curling your tailbone down. Breathe here. And here we go, we're gonna reverse our warrior, reaching back behind us. And I want you to breathe, use your breath. And even when you don't feel like you can stay in this position, I just want you to take one more breath here. Excellent job, here we go. Let's switch it up, extended side angle. Put your right arm on your right knee and then reach over your head. Use your breath here to find your strength. And here we go, let's reverse it again. Reaching back behind us, finding length through our side body. Exhale, switch it up. And if you wanna sink a little bit lower into this, you can go ahead and drop your arm right down towards the ground and then be sure that you're staying engaged through that back leg. Reaching above your head. Excellent job. Let's go ahead and take our hands and we're gonna keep them actually on the inside of the um, right leg for a lizard pose. So you can decide here, I, uh, my, blocks, my blocks are in the other room. So you can decide here to stay right here if you feel this stretch already in Lizard. Or you can even try to lower down onto your elbows. That is really up to you. It is dependent on your flexibility and where you are in this yoga practice. Now, you don't have to go down onto your elbows here just to prove a point that you can do it. If you're feeling yourself crunched up or you're, it doesn't feel right and you're not breathing into it, then just back off a little bit, come up. Let your breath help you through this practice. And this is a really good spot for me today. Some days you might be able to sink into poses, other days you might not, and that's okay. You just need to accept that. Use your breath to help you and then just go ahead and press yourself back up. So you're on your arms if you were on your elbows before, and then I want you to step your right leg back to meet your left. Move through your vinyasa. Exhale, press it back, downward facing dog. 
We're all meeting here together. Take a breath here. All right, let's go ahead. Switch it up, same thing, other side. Lift the leg up so you're in three-legged dog. And then I just want you to open up through the hips so you can give yourself a little bend and straighten at your own, at your own free will. Ooh. Now this is a move, it does feel good, but it's not one we wanna do all the time because it does put a lot of pressure on our lower back. But it's a good one every now and again. Square up those hips. Let's go ahead and draw the knee into the chest and hold for three, two, and one. Step it through. Align your back foot, set up for warrior two. So our front heel is in line with our back heel. The back heel is at that 90 degree angle and then our arms are coming forward. Now let's just do a little tuck here. So draw your belly button into your spine, drop your tailbone down, make sure this front knee is not turning in. You're keeping weight through that back foot, drop the shoulders away from the ears so you're nice and cozy in warrior two. And let's go ahead and reverse your warrior. So reaching back behind you, be sure that you're not putting pressure with your hand on your knee joint. You're keeping the, your front leg is working. It's really holding you up right now. And then exhale, let's go ahead and take the left arm to the left leg and then a reach overhead. Tuck your tailbone here. Make sure your back leg is very active right now. And on the inhale, come up once again. Repeat, reverse your warrior. And let's go back to extended side angle. You decide if you want to go take your arm to the ground or keep your arm rested on your leg, that's your choice. All right, let's go ahead and take your right arm down to the mat and left arm down to the mat. Take your foot right to the outside of your mat for a lizard pose. So once again, you decide if you wanna hang out right here and just enjoy this really luscious, great stretch. And I, this is one of those poses I have to even remind myself I remind myself to engage through that right leg. So I squeeze through the glute, lift that leg up, and then you can decide if you're ready and it feels good with your breath, lower down into um, lizard and you can stay right on your forearms. If you have blocks, this is a really good way to work into this. You can always keep your blocks at a higher level and then lower down, lower down, and do it with progressions. You actually might find that one side you feel more flexible than the other. And that's just because we favor different sides, how we stand, how we sit, how we walk, we tend to favor certain sides. So that's why yoga is so important. Stretching out and trying to treat each other fairly. All right, go ahead and press yourself back up onto your hands. Step your left leg back to meet the right. Move through your chaturanga. Actually, just go ahead and lower right onto your belly. And we're gonna just go into locust. So take your hands right to your chest and then press through the bottoms of, or sorry, the tops of your feet. That's what's in contact with the ground. And then I just want you to press yourself up and lift your chest, eyes will look forward. Try not to um, crank your head or neck up right now. Um, in all of our moves, we wanna keep a nice long spine. So eyes will look kind of forward down towards the ground. And then as you're in this pose, I want you to think about getting longer as you lower yourself down. So like actually think about like, kind of like separating those vertebrae in between the back and you're getting longer with each time you do these. Okay, so I think about pulling my, like I have a weight on the bottom of my tailbone. And then as I lower myself, I reach forward instead of crunching myself up and back to make myself look like I'm in a certain shape. 
so I feel like I'm doing yoga right, right? So I just want you to think about what you're actually doing with your body. And it's not about reaching a certain shape or an image to try to look like people who are very flexible or, you know, those yoga pictures you see. We're not trying to be them. Right now, we're just trying to take care of ourselves. Let's do that one more time. So press yourself up. Act like you have that weight on the bottom of your tailbone and then lower yourself down slowly. Getting longer. Good. Excellent. So this time, curl your toes under. Power push up right into plank. And then let's go ahead, roll it back into our downward facing dog. Mm. All right, bend the legs to step or hop to the front of your mat. All right, let's go ahead and roll down one vertebrae at a time, drawing your belly button into your spine, lower right to the ground. And then I want you to take your heels right to your caboose, take your right leg, place it on your left. And now here, take your palms, press them on the ground. So driving through your heel, I want you to press your hips up towards the sky. And I want you to hold. So here, these hip presses, we're doing it with a single leg. It's kind of weighted because we have the weight of the other leg. All right, lower the hips down and then press it towards the ceiling. We're gonna just do this five times. Two. Three. Four. And five, hold, squeeze through the glute, through that left side, press through the heel. Kick those hips up towards the sky and exhale, lower. Good. Let's go ahead and switch sides. So take the left leg, place it on the right, drive through the heel, press those hips up towards the sky. Press it up. Lower the hips and then press it towards the sky for five, four, three, two, and one, hold. Now I want you to think about clenching your cheeks. Use your glutes here, okay? Press your hips up towards the sky, and breathe, and relax. Lower those hips down. Excellent job. Go ahead and pull the knees towards the chest. And we're gonna finish with a figure four stretch. So go ahead and raise the left leg up towards the sky. Cross your right leg right on top, so you're in this four number here. And then go ahead and put your left arm right in the hole, and the right arm, or left arm's gonna sneak around. Basically, you just go ahead and hold your left leg. My left and right are all confused today. I want you to think about pulling your left toes towards your shin, and then as you're in this pose, you can always pull that leg closer towards your chest. As you do that, you're gonna feel more of a stretch in your right hip. You can also take a bend here with the left leg and then work on pulling the leg closer to your chest. And every time you create more tension, I want you to think of releasing the tension in the right hip. Release that hot. Excellent job. All right, go ahead and switch sides. This time lift that uh, right leg straight up towards the sky and the left leg's gonna cross over top. And then weave your arm right in the hole there. And then you can bend at the leg, at the knee. My goodness, my instructions. Sorry, hang in there. Excellent job, go ahead and release. Both feet together at the your bum, and then I just want you to go ahead and windshield wiper your legs. Drop them side to side, and eventually your legs will reach a point where 
can just straighten them right out for our final pose. Vinyas. Shavasana. Now I just want you to take a nice cleansing breath in through the nose, expanding your belly, and then letting it out. Some of the reasons that we might develop a lot of tightness in the hips and feel tight hip flexors and even feel to a point where you have pulling in your back is actually just due to how we hold on to stress. And you don't think about how moments of stress compound on each other. So when you're a teenager, you might have experienced a little bit of stress, a small stone. And then through your adult years, you may have picked up a few more stones and you fill it in your bag. And every year that you have more stress, you collect like this bag of stones and it weighs you down. It affects your mind, it affects your body, it affects your physical and mental health. And if we don't deal with stress when it comes our way, we push it off, we ignore it, we ignore our feelings. If we don't deal with it, then that bag just becomes heavier. We carry the weight of those stones around with us every single day. And it manifests in many ways. It can be weakness, it can be tightness, it can be soreness. Mentally, it can be fatigue, it can be anxiety, it can be fear, it can be depression. And in terms of our physical health, it could be digestive problems, it could be autoimmune diseases. There are many things that stress alone can cause. You can gain weight, you can become overweight, you can have heart problems, all from just carrying this stress. But through yoga and meditation, quiet and stillness, dealing with these feelings for what they are, and learning to move through it, learning to move past it in a healthy, way is necessary for you to overcome stress and know that every single given day is going to have its own challenges but know that the way that you look at life the way you approach each and every situation can either help or hinder the situation itself. So just like in this practice today, you were able to channel into your breath, you were able to channel into expanding the leg, your lungs, and taking a big breath to get deeper into these postures, to get more out of them. You can choose to get more out of life. Just by plugging in being conscious, being aware of yourself, being aware of how you feel, using your breath to help you through difficult times, it can help you through a stressful situation at work. It can help you take a moment when you're arguing for no reason with somebody. This time of awareness is so important for your well-being mentally and physically.
start to bring awareness to your fingers. Curled up in a ball, and then go ahead and press yourself up to a seat. Thank you so much for taking this time for yoga with me. I thoroughly enjoy it, and I'm so proud of you for taking this time to make yourself feel good and develop your self confidence. Taking this time to reflect in life and to be true to yourself, to take care of your own needs. And every time you do that, you can give more to others. If you like this video today, be sure to click the like button and the subscribe button. It's red, it says subscribe. That way you get notifications every single time I post new workouts. I hope you go about your day feeling good, feeling open, feeling refreshed. Have a great day. Go ahead and take your hands to your chest. Bow at the center. Namaste. <coughs>